Okay, he needs to frame back up. He said uh, frame back up. How does that look? How does that look? That looks excellent. How does that look? Okay, great. Okay, great. Admiral, this is Brian Whitman at the Pentagon. Can you hear me okay? Brian, I can hear you loud and clear. Uh, thanks for doing this. We're not out on the, in, the, uh, in the room just yet, although this is a, a, a live mic over the air. I just want to thank you for uh, taking the time tonight, though, to do this. And uh, uh, clearly, our, our press back here in Pentagon uh, is very interested in uh, the operation, and I think you can provide some in insight into what uh, NavSense is doing. And so I just want to thank you before I get out there and introduce you for doing this this evening. Okay, Brian, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to talk to you tonight. We're just about uh, 60 seconds out, Admiral, and then uh, the next time you hear me, I'll actually be in the briefing room. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, to Vice Admiral uh, Patrick Walsh, uh, good evening. Uh, and thank you for taking the time this evening from Bahrain. Our briefer is uh, Vice Admiral Patrick Walsh, who is the commander of U.S. Naval Forces Central Command and the U.S. Fifth Fleet. Uh, Vice Admiral Walsh and his staff are coordinating uh, the U.S. military's assistance to the departure of Americans from Lebanon. Uh, he is speaking to you outside his headquarters in Bahrain, and uh, again, we appreciate you doing this on uh, little notice and uh, late in the evening like it is. Uh, with that, Admiral, I think what I'd like to do is turn it over to you to see if you'd like to start with any opening remarks, and then we'll get into some questions here. Thank you, Brian. Yes, I thought what we would do is just give you a quick snapshot of how we see things developing in Beirut from uh, our perspective and then open up for questions. Uh, currently, Orient Queen is pierside in Beirut. Uh, we will take on passengers and depart at first light tomorrow morning. Uh, we have uh, Brigadier General Carl Jensen on the ground in Akrotiri, Cyprus. He's the commander of our task force and coordinating the efforts. Approximately nine ships are en route to the area, nine U.S. ships, as well as coalition ships from the United Kingdom, Spain, and Italy. Uh, the ones I wanted to talk to you about tonight uh, are the U.S. ships that's en route. We have six ships coming out of uh, our area of, of responsibility, uh, which includes ships from the Indian Ocean, the Red Sea, and the Gulf of Aqaba that are en route. This is part of the expeditionary strike group uh, led by the Iwo Jima. And in conjunction with our uh, European command, we have three ships that are, are flowing in into the Mediterranean, uh, Eastern Mediterranean, excuse me, uh, en route to the joint operating area off the coast of Beirut. These ships have been uh, involved in a, an effort that, uh, frankly, has had our guidance to proceed at best speed and to be ready uh, to accept passengers uh, and American citizens on arrival. And uh, we're moving as quickly as we can 
Uh, it's a complex, a, a complex operation that involves uh, uh, an extraordinary level of effort. We're sending the very best that we have available and we'll move at max speed. And what I'd like to do is uh, open it up to your questions and find out uh, what, uh, what your interests are tonight. Let's go ahead and start with Will. Uh, this is Will Dunham uh, with uh, Reuters. Uh, Admiral, um, how many uh, U.S. citizens will be on the Orient Queen tomorrow when it, uh, when it departs Lebanon? And why didn't the Orient Queen uh, make its first uh, uh, passage to Cyprus today? Did it, uh, does this involve the Israeli blockade? Uh, approximately uh, 800 to 1,000 will, will be on the ship. I can't give you the exact number. This will be one of our, our first operations with the Orient Queen. A lot to, uh, that is involved in the answer to that question will specifically have to do with uh, space available on the ship. But our understanding is approximately 800 to, uh, to 1,000. Uh, and uh, as far as the second part of your question is concerned, uh, the, uh, the Orient Queen had uh, come in contact with the Israeli blockade while it was en route to uh, Beirut. Uh, it was delayed. Uh, for a period of about 20 to 30 minutes. I would characterize this as uh, some coordination procedures as the Orient Queen as the, was uh, inbound to Beirut. Uh, but uh, in terms of uh, the ability of Orient Queen to arrive on station, it had a lot to do with just simply the time and distance and speed available. Uh, uh, Admiral, um, have any additional commercial vessels been contracted to take part in the evacuation? Uh, yes, we're working with U.S. Transportation Command, and we have uh, uh, potentially two more motor vessels that will be part of the ferrying activity back and forth between Cyprus and Beirut. Pauline Jelinek of the Associated Press. Sir, uh, could you talk in more detail about when the nine ships you referred to would be arriving and what their roles will be with more detail. The, uh, of the nine ships, uh, four of those are amphibious ships. Uh, they're arriving from uh, Gulf of Aqaba and Red Sea. First ship arrives tomorrow and we'll see the rest of the ships arrive during the course of the week. Uh, the three ships from European Command are arriving as we speak. And over the next uh, two or three days. Admiral Tom Bowman with National Public Radio. Do you expect any of the Navy ships to take part in the evacuation? And also, we've been told by the Military Sea Lift Command that they've already contracted with a ship uh, called the Rama, which carries 1,400 passengers, and it's en route to Cyprus. Can you uh, talk about that? Uh, Rama does have a capacity of about 1,400. We'll, we'll see that in Cyprus here tomorrow, and I'll, I'll be able to update you once we get uh, operations with it. And I'm sorry, Tom, what was the other part of your question? The other is, uh, do you expect any uh, of the Navy vessels to take part in the evacuation, or is that just in case of an emergency uh, procedures? I do expect Navy vessels to participate in the authorized departure of American citizens out of Beirut. I'm sorry, Tom, I'm getting a little bit of feedback here with this microphone. Navy uh, vessels taking part? We do. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I was just going to complete the, uh, the, the answer. Uh, we do have to be prepared for any contingency. We have to be prepared for uh, a, a range of operations uh, for an extended period of time. Over here, Nick. Uh, Admiral, it's Nick Simeone at Fox News. What, how do you, what do you consider the threat level to this operation to be? Uh, the threat level to date allows for us to move ferries back and forth, but it's not something that we take for granted. So, part of the effort here is to plan for any contingency. That's our job, and that's the sort of uh, mindset that we're going into uh, with this operation. So the threat level presently allows for us to move the ferry back and forth. Uh, we will take advantage of that uh, to the maximum extent possible, but we'll also have warships positioned strategically and tactically in order to uh, ensure the safe and secure passage of American citizens from Lebanon to Cyprus. 
Peter, go ahead. It's Peter speaking with the Los Angeles Times. Um, we, we, we know what ships are part of the Iwo Jima task group, but can you give us some detail on the on the UCOM ships? Uh, are they amphibs or what kind of ships they are? And also to, to follow up on Tom's question, if you could just be a little more detail on how the Navy ships might participate in the evacuation. Are we talking about using helicopters from the amphibs to go into the embassy and bring them back on the ships? Or, or are we talking about surface ships going back and forth? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure, I'd be glad to. Uh, we have four amphibious uh, ships with well decks that can take American citizens on board. Uh, there's a substantial number of people that we can take on board with the amphibious uh, transport docks and, and uh, dock landing ships. The, uh, uh, the operation with uh, UCOM assets involve the Gonzales, which is already on station, Barry, which is en route, and the Mount Whitney, which is the command and control ship afloat. Uh, those assets are on the way to the operating area as well. And I might add that uh, we're working with our, our uh, UK um, allies here when it comes to uh, this operation and they have approximately si uh, six ships that are arriving in the operating area here uh, tomorrow and the day after. Well, let's go over to Jim Mannion. Uh, Admiral, this is uh, Jim Mannion from AFP. How, how closely are you coordinating uh, your operations with the Israelis now? Uh, we're working with European Command who has uh, contact with a coordination cell and I'd, I'd like to just leave it at that. Uh, we're deconflicting operations here. Uh, our sole purpose and focus here is the uh, departure of American citizens out of Lebanon, and that's really the extent uh, of our uh, mission at this point. Any kind of coordination that uh, we can take with the Israelis through European Command that can facilitate that departure and help us to expedite and to move quickly, uh, we will work with them closely in order to make that an efficient operation. Yeah. Uh, this is Joe Tabit with Al Hura. Uh, Admiral, do you have any information if uh, the, this operation will take place in the port of Beirut? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? I don't think I, I was able to understand it completely. I'm not sure I got it exactly, Joe. Uh, again. I was asking if, if, do you have any information if these operations, evacuation operations, will take place in the port of Beirut? Uh, yes, we will use the port of Beirut for our uh, amphibious operations. The advantage of bringing the amphibious uh, capability is that if, if in the event that there is a deterioration of the conditions of, at the port, we're able to uh, move either north or south as required in order to uh, continue the departure of American citizens. Jeff, go ahead. Admiral, Jeff Shogel with Stars and Stripes. What role do you see the 2200 sailors and Marines with the 24th New uh, having in these evacuation efforts? Well, this is our rapid re response capability. Uh, they're capable of amphibious operations day and night, all weather. They're also capable of, uh, excuse me, of uh, operations that uh, are uh, conventional in terms of an authorized departure like this. And so uh, this is a core Marine competency. This is part of, uh, of the effort here that Marines train to, to be able to handle and facilitate uh, the movement of this uh, large number of people uh, over to Cyprus. So remember they have an air element. Uh, that will be part of the effort. They have a ground element that we will have in ready reserve in the event that we need them. And they also have a, a support group that will be part of facilitating this mission. Reserve. Does that mean they won't go it on on the ground unless you need them? Uh, the, remember, the environment right now allows us to use ferries. So when we characterize the environment, uh, this is an environment that uh, we, we would consider permissive. However, we're very much aware of the movement of uh, weapons into the area and, and how the situation can change uh, rapidly. So the, the benefit of having the Marines uh, expeditionary unit on board is that we can adjust to changing conditions on the battlefield. At the moment, I'm going to continue to use the ferries and I'm going to facilitate uh, the movement, the mass movement of people as fast as we can using the amphibious transport that's available with the, uh, the four ships that are here part of the Iwo Jima expeditionary strike group. Uh, at that point, I don't think it would be helpful to speculate any further in terms of uh, going ashore or uh, 
future operations that may involve or may not involve the use of amphibious uh, Marines ashore. So let's leave it at that and then we'll talk further in the event that the environment changes. Go ahead. Um, Kay Maddox from Voice of America. Admiral, two questions. Um, has the U.S. military asked Israel to back off its um, uh, targeting of Lebanon while these operations go on so they can go on safely and smoothly? That's number one. And number two, do you have an estimate of, of the total number of American citizens that will be evacuated eventually? I know that European Command is coordinating with the Israelis. They're aware of our movement. They're aware of our intentions. They know that we're on the way, and they know that we're making best speed and we're going to operate as soon as we arrive. Uh, to the second part of your question, we've got rough orders of magnitude, and frankly, we're not going to know until we get there in terms of uh, how many people are, are uh, ready to leave. Uh, some of the early estimates were 5,000, but we're prepared for that number to change in the event that conditions change. And so that's part of our level of planning and effort that's gone into this mission up until this point. Sir, uh, Jim Garamon from AFPS. Israel is a part of European Command. Lebanon is a part of Central Command. That, that seam between the two commands, is that uh, difficult for you to overcome? Well, as you can see, we have uh, command and control afloat uh, capabilities that are here from European Command. Uh, we have destroyers that are here from European Command, and you have Central Command assets that are working as well. So I haven't come up uh, against any seam issues. I will leverage whatever relationships that UCOM has with Israel. Uh, remember that our sole focus in uh, Central Command is really with uh, a number of partners in the region that object to uh, operations with Israel. Uh, UCOM has a relationship with Israel. We'll work through that. But up until this point, we have not had any issues that uh, we consider seams or that limit our ability to operate effectively in the area. Go ahead. Admiral, it's uh, Louis Martinez with ABC News. Can you tell us which port the Orient Queen is going to return to in Cyprus? And given that uh, this is a mission that uh, turnaround maybe of about a day or so, is it your ultimate goal to have daily ferries uh, going in and out of uh, Cyprus? And uh, it seems right now there's going to be a gap right now. Uh, we'll coordinate the, uh, the number of uh, times that we can get ferries back and forth alongside with the amphibious ships that will be moving people as well. And uh, let me get back to you in terms of the, uh, the port and the port specifics that are part of your question. Uh, we'll get that for you. That'll be a matter of record. Uh, let's go to Jim Lukashevsky. Uh, Admiral Jim Lukashevsky with NBC. I just wanted to clarify one, one point. Uh, is it the intention to put U.S. naval vessels into the port at Beirut? Uh, it is the intention to use U.S. naval vessels to facilitate the rapid transfer of citizens off of Lebanon and into Cyprus. In terms of uh, whether or not you're going to see, I'm sorry, going to see ships tied up alongside or not, uh, I don't know that that would facilitate the rapid use of amphibious craft. And, uh, and recognize that we have a changing environment. So, uh, Jim, the way to answer your question is I'm going to position those ships uh, tactically in view of how the environment changes. And I wouldn't try and predict what that's going to look like tomorrow or the day after. So if you can give me a little room here, what we're going to do is take advantage of all the capability that we have and then uh, recognize that we're trying to move quickly, that we're trying to move large numbers of people as fast as we can, but at the same time, we're charged with the responsibility for their security and safety. So we'll take all that into account, and then I'll be able to answer the question in terms of how close they're going to be or how far apart they're going to be. Larry Shaughnessy from CNN. Admiral, should Americans who are being evacuated be expected to reimburse the federal gover government for the cost of the evacuation? Uh, I have not considered uh, reimbursement, but that is something that probably the State Department would be best positioned to answer. Let's try to take these three and we'll close it up then. Let's start with Joe. Uh, again, this is Joe Tabbitt. Uh, Admiral, are, are you taking seriously the risk of any attack from the Hezbollah against uh, your ships? 
I'm sorry, could you re repeat the question? We're just having a little interference here. The question uh, was uh, your concern about attacks by Hezbollah. I'm concerned about attacks on ships, you bet. That's our job and that is our focus and that's one of the reasons why uh, the answers that I'm giving you tonight are the best I can give you conceptually, but they're not going to reveal a lot of specific detail. And that's because this is part of the ongoing calculations here. We do not assume anything uh, when we go into an environment like this. And so we'll make all preparations in our planning and deliberations so that we're ready for any contingency. Uh, and that, that sort of scenario is something that well, we are planning for. Uh, it's something that, uh, you know, up until this point, uh, uh, innocent vessels have been able to move freely back and forth. Uh, ferries are able to move freely back and forth. And so we're going to continue to manage and monitor the situation and we'll take proactive steps to ensure the safety and security of the crew and the passengers. Jim. Jim Manning from AFP again. Uh, why is it that it's taken so long uh, to order uh, the amphibious warships to the Med? I mean, we're six days into this crisis and it, it seems like a long time. Uh, it's a good question and thank you for it. Uh, the order did not come uh, six days into the crisis. Uh, remember, we do have a time distance problem here. You've got vessels coming all the way from the Indian Ocean, uh, Jebel Ali, in fact. You have vessels that were uh, in exercises, uh, in this particular case, uh, on the ground in Jordan prior to uh, the events that, uh, that took place here over the weekend, as well as vessels in the Red Sea. So we're working against uh, the environment, and we're making best speed, and we'll be ready on arrival. Uh, Admiral, Jeff with Stars and Stripes again. In order to get the evacuees onto the amphibs, are you planning on heloing them from Beirut to the ships? I will use all means available to us. So that Im involves uh, some of the landing craft units, that it also involves helicopters. All right, uh, I did say that was yeah. last, but we'll let uh, Tom finish us out. Admiral Tom Bowman again with NPR. Can you give us the capacity of the amphids to take on evacuees? Any sense of how many you can hold? Uh, Tom, what I'd like to do is just describe it's a very large number. It would uh, be in excess of 1,000. And uh, what I'd like to do is uh, give us a day of these operations, and we'll see uh, exactly how this uh, plays out. We're working closely with the embassy. So the number that we actually take on board is a number that we've coordinated in advance with the embassy. And then what I'd like to do is to report to you at the end of the day just how that number has uh, played out. Clarification, please. Okay, we don't have a question, we have a clarification. Uh, Jim Miklaszewski, NBC again. Has the decision, Admiral, been made to use U.S. Navy vessels to transport uh, American evacuees out of Lebanon, or is that a contingency? No, the, uh, the answer to your question is, it's not a contingency. Uh, we are going to use U.S. Navy vessels in order to transport, excuse me again, we are going to use U.S. Navy vessels to transport uh, our American citizens out of Beirut and to Cyprus. Uh, we will do that in conjunction with the ferries that are uh, moving people back and forth, the ones that we discussed earlier under contract uh, with the Military Sea Lift Command. That last part sort of muddied the waters a little bit. Will we see American evacuees on U.S. Navy vessels uh, transported to Cyprus, or will they just facilitate uh, the use of the uh, commercial carriers? You will see amphibious ships with American citizens on board. You will see the destroyers and the other combatants in the area facilitate the safe movement and secure movement of those passengers. Does that help? <laughs> I think we've uh, gotten through a, g a good series of questions and even a couple clarifications there. So, uh, Admiral, again, I'd like to thank you for your time this evening. And uh, obviously, uh, we're going to be into this for a little while, and we hope that uh, you'll make yourself available uh, as we go down the road a little bit to, to keep us well informed on what the command is doing. I will make myself available, and I want to be clear uh, tonight that we've uh, addressed all the concerns and we gave you the clarifications that you need. Are there any uh, reattacks here that we need to go back and, and be uh, provide further clarification? Can you self-update 
<laughs> Admiral, they'll keep, they'll, they'll keep you here all night. <laughs> well, let's recognize, I mean, I appreciate the, the point, but let's recognize we've got a changing situation, that we have a very complex environment that we're about ready to uh, put a substantial number of more American citizens into, and that the security and safety of those people are, are paramount to us, and that's our number one mission. And so uh, while we're looking at 5,000 that are currently uh, listed as authorized departures, we are expecting more, but we have a, a very large responsibility, a, a very large scope of effort. And I want to be very clear on one point. The order has been given at, at some time ago in order to respond to this crisis. And you, you're looking at uh, substantial global effort in order to respond quickly and with the ability to adapt to any changes on the ground as well as to sustain the effort for however long it takes. Again, Admiral, and uh, we hope to talk to you soon.